Today, I'm gonna teach you how to get people to come to your show. More specifically, I'm gonna talk about doing something called street promotion involved in doing gigs that you're throwing for yourself. And I wanna clarify something. The best way to grow your audience is still by making great music and building a great online brand. But if you've decided to take the shortcut of doing gigs yourself and doing your own local show, then this is an alternative way. And I also wanna be clear that there is a cap on what I'm about to tell you. You can probably do, you know, 100 100, 200 people using these methods, but this is not the kind of stuff that you can sell out a concert with or a festival or a big headlining nightclub show. Again, for those things, you have to use the best methodology, which is making great music and having a great brand. So many of my students want to do these local gigs themselves and throw their own parties. So here we are. If you don't know, I'm Justin. I run Cosmic Academy. Before I started Cosmic Academy, I probably threw over a thousand, two thousand shows. What we do at Cosmic Academy is we're an artist development program. We've been around for over 10 years. We've worked with over 700 artists and they get incredible results. They sign to the biggest labels like Tool Room, Monster Cat, and Juna, and they play some of the biggest shows in the world. They play Ultra, they play in Ibiza. We said three students play EDC. And yes, the ones that play the biggest shows and go on the biggest tours, they do it by having great music and having a great brand. And we have plenty of videos on those topics. But some of them, when they were starting out, just like get their foot in the door or just like get some DJ gigs under their belt, wanted to do it this other way. Okay, so let's say you've chosen that you're going to do your own party. Let's learn how to promote it so that you can get as many people through that door. If you're watching this and saying, well, the promoting is, is interesting, Justin, I will learn that, but how do I get the venue? So we already did that video. You can watch that after this. I can have that pop up somewhere right now. But in that video, we explain that you need three things to do your own gig. You need a venue, which we've discussed. You need the promotion which we'll talk about today, and then the party. When I say the party, what you're really trying to do here is you're trying to build a party. You know, this is not about you just like DJing a gig. No, the best artists throw branded parties. When you go to see Above and Beyond, you're really not going to see them to just DJ. What you're seeing is group therapy, their party. You're not just going to see Eric Prids DJ, you're going to see his party, Hollow. You know, Claude Von Stroke, you're not going to see him DJ. He does his own branded party. He does you know, Dirty Bird Compound. Dirty Bird Barbecue. It's actually a barbecue. It's great. And we're going to talk about that in the next video. So if you're not subscribed, please do ring that bell. You know, we're putting these out in a series. And in that video, we're going to talk all about building out your party, creating really fun activations, because the end goal should always be an amazing experience for the people that come, for the fans. So you'll watch the building the party one next. We've already done how to get the venue. So let's talk about the second stage, how to promote it. Now, look, you could do as many many posts as you want on Instagram. You can do ticket giveaways and online raffles and you can run you know, ads through social media. But if you're just doing your first one and you don't have a big following, it's probably not gonna do as much as you think it's gonna do. I don't wanna discourage you from doing that. You can still do any sorts of promoting online. But where I think you'll get the most success, where, where I got the most success, is what we call street promotion. And that's stuff that's on the ground in the real world using promoters and these different street tactics. First, let's talk about pricing the event because the price of the event will dictate how you can promote it. My students will sometimes come to me and they'll want to do a show and sell like $70 tickets. $70 is way too much. My show, Cosmic Opera, you know, the, the one behind me, we had Axwell from Swedish House Mafia. We had Zed, we had all these huge names. It was, it was a massive concert with a big production. That was $70. So what you have to do is you should look at the market, look in your city at comparable shows, look at who's playing, look at who's DJing and do not price your stuff near that level. You can't be charging what the big name headliner coming to your city is charging. I think the range of like $20 is really the most you could do. But I'd also consider doing a pre-sale or we call early bird pricing. And that'll incentivize some early sales, some quick sales at the beginning. For instance, you can maybe charge like a $10 early bird and then, then a $15 tier one and then a $20 tier two. And there's websites that can help you do this. There's Eventbrite, there's Tixer. They make it very, very easy. So check those out. The cool thing is no one but you will know how many tickets you're really putting up for those early bird ticket sales. So you can make an event appear very high demand by putting less tickets 
in the early bird tickets. So let's just say you're selling 100 tickets. Don't put 50, 60, 70 of them at the early bird. When I did Cosmic Operas, we would be selling 4,000 tickets. We would only do like four or 500 as the early bird. That's only 10%. And what was great about that is we sold them out in one minute, literally. Early bird, gone in a minute. And what that does is it kind of like hypes up everyone else. It's like, oh, wow, look, look, at, look at how in demand this event is, this show is, that their early bird went like that. And then it helped the rest of our tickets sell very, very quickly. So be smart. Really think about how many tickets you're going to put in each category. The other reason why pricing is important is because you're going to have to pay people to promote. That's right. The beginning of my career for the first 500, 700 you know, shows I did, I had to hire people to promote for me. It's not till you get like really, really big where you're throwing huge concerts, do you no longer need street promoters. But with the ticket prices, you can actually incentivize people to be able to hire promoters. So for instance, if tickets are between 10 and $20, you can give someone $5 for bringing one person. You know, you give them a code for Eventbrite or Tixer. So when they sell their tickets, you can track how many they're selling. If they sell 20 tickets, you know, 20 people are coming, they just made a hundred bucks. If you really want to incentivize them, give them $10 per person. You know, the point of this is not for you to like, just walk out with all the money. You know, you're doing this because you want to get your feet wet with, with doing shows and playing and performing. You know, the point here is to build a great brand to help you with your furthering of, of your career. It's not to walk out with all the money. So where do we find these promoters to hire? You start with your friends. You know, go to your friends, tell them what you're doing. Say, hey, if you could bring five people, if you want to pay them, pay them. If you want to just give them free drinks, give them free drinks. But having your core group of people behind you, that's everything. The next best place is local colleges in your town. Obviously, the people that attend the most events that go out to these things the most are of college age. Now, what I used to do is at the beginning of semesters, I would print a bunch of flyers and the flyers would essentially be job opportunities for anyone interested in nightlife or job opportunities for anyone interested in shows. I would give some student at the college, you know, 20 bucks to fly or a dorm with them. And I would do this every year. And at the start of every semester, sure enough, I'd have 10, 20 new people show up to a meeting to discuss this opportunity. People want to be in this business. People want to throw shows. People want to be around nightclubs and parties. So it actually wasn't that hard. Now, I was always constrained and I would always do 21 plus. I don't know where you live, or your city or your country. Maybe you're doing 18 plus. You know, that wasn't the case for me. I, I always did strictly 21 plus. So you hire these promoters and you can first incentivize them with that ticket rip, which is what I was talking about before, where you're paying them per head, $5, $10, whatever it may be. You can also incentivize them in another way. Explain to them that you're building a party here. You're building a brand here and getting them in at the ground level means further opportunities with you. you know, down the road, you know, you make them a partner on the party. You give them a percentage of everything. You know, if they do a really fantastic job, let them take over the whole operation in the future. You know, I have a lot of students that will start with this. You know, they'll start and hire a bunch of promoters, help them do like some early gigs, you know, 50 people, 100 people shows. And then one person stays with them for six months, a year, and they're always doing a great job. And they just hire them you know, full time. And it's like they're a promoter and they, they jump on all the shows that they do. And then when that student gets even more successful and starts playing bigger shows, they kind of come along for the ride. So it's a bit of a win-win. You want to play the shows, promoters want to make money off those shows. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So college is definitely one of the easier places to find these promoters. Another place to find potential promoters are actually at your competitor venues in this local town you're in. So yes, what I'm saying is you can go to the other local spots in your town, the other clubs, the other bars, and hire some of the people that work there. But I must caution you, you do not want to piss off these other venues. Why? Because you might want to play those venues someday. So what I recommend and what I used to do is I would go to those venues and they're like really big nights. Let's say the Saturday night party. And I would go and find like the, the lower level promoter in there, you know, the, the person doing kind of the filler crowd, not really making much money, you know, doing it for a couple of drink tickets. And I would say, hey, I know you do this on Saturdays, I'm not trying to compete with this. I can pay you more and give you more access and power and all that stuff. I'm doing something on, on a Thursday. And when you do that, when you really incentivize them and give them way more money, potentially way more power, you know, that's how they want to get ahead in this business. And you'd be shocked at like how much promoters care about like the ego side of it. You know, put their name on the flyer, you know, put their name on the ticket, give them the free drinks, the free bottle, the VIP access. All those things work great. I always joke about it. I once had this promoter in, uh, I think it was Washington, D.C. I've done parties, you know, all over. And I was doing parties in Washington. 
Washington, D.C. And I had this, this one gentleman who I offered him a certain amount of money one night. It might have been 200 bucks to bring 20 people. And he brought those 20 people. The next time I did the party, I said, instead of that, I'll give you this whole VIP you know, back entrance. I'll give you a free table with a free bottle of champagne. He brought twice as many people. So you can always find creative ways to incentivize promoters. The next place you can find promoters, other DJs. This is a great way to get more people to your event. Let's pretend that you're doing your show and the event is going to go 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Listen to me very clearly. No one wants to hear you. Not yet. Play a marathon set for seven hours. So you should be booking out those other time slots. Do you know how much the average festival set time is? The average set time at like Ultra? It's 55 minutes. So if Tiesto and Cascade and Skrillex can get it done in 55 minutes, so can you. And with that said, you could have potentially four, five, six DJs on the bill. And here's how you do it. It's simple. Hey, you're you're a local DJ. You want to play this gig? We're doing it. You got to bring 10 people. Because the truth is, and, and right now, I'm going to be really honest with you, here's the truth. If there aren't 10 people locally who want to come and see you play, then you're not ready to do this kind of thing. And if these other DJs don't have 10 people that want to come out and support them, see them play, then they're not ready. And this is a tough pill to swallow for some people. The truth is, this is a business. The venues are a business, the bars are a business, the clubs are a business, it's all a business. And you might be cursing me out right now that I said that, but remember what I said at the beginning of the video. You don't have to do it like this. The best way to do this is make great music, make a great brand. If you do that, then you don't have to think about any of this stuff. But this is the quicker way. This is the faster way. Just because it's quicker doesn't mean it's easier. Let's go back to the promotion. So where to find these DJs? Where, where, where do we get a DJ to come play this show? You can 100% do what we did before at the promoters and go to you know, local venues and talk to those DJs and local bars and talk to those residents. But another great place, Facebook groups. I know people like hate Facebook at this point, but the group functionality, the group section on Facebook, it's actually really, really good. You know, type into the group section, you know, the name of your city and the genre that you make. And you'll find like a, a group or many groups of, of techno New York or trance in Denver or dubstep in, in Chicago. And in that group, you will 100% find other DJs in that city that play that sound. Start networking and try to get four or five other DJs that are willing to come and play and bring 10 people. If we add that up, where you have some college promoters, some DJs promoting, some local club folks, your friends, you might have a 50 to 100 person gig. And being honest, that's really, really good. My first few parties had like 12 people. And look, I want to be clear. There's so many other small things you could do. I could have made this video four hours, but th these are the big things that are going to get you the most. You know, you could print flyers, you know, give them to someone on a skateboard to, to flyer the town, to flyer certain streets, to flyer other bars, to you know, flyer the, the dorms at that local college. You know, there's ways to get on radio and you can obviously do the, the social media stuff we were talking about earlier. But just by doing the street promotional stuff we talked about today, getting these promoters, you might be able to have 40, 50, 60, 70 people fill a room. And that's a good party. You know, you can make that fun. And if you make that fun, you can build on that. Because if they have a great time, then they tell their friends. And the next party you do in a month or two months, you'll have that as a base and it'll grow and grow. And I just want to tell you, some of my best parties had 80 people at them. And now would be a good time to remind you, don't take a venue that's too big. It's always better to have sold out and packed a smaller room than not be able to fill an empty large room. Okay, so in the next video on this topic, we're going to talk about building the actual party, right? The concept, making it fun, making it a great experience for the people that show up. So make sure you're subscribed, make sure you have the notifications on. But if you're just like sick and tired of thinking about doing these types of gigs or getting promoters or dealing with any of this crap, rather just do it the old fashioned way, make great music. Here's an awesome video from Zach talking about making great music. Go watch that now.